Okay, people, here it is. A countdown of the top 10 strongest Digimon out of approximately 1,176 known species. That is, the top 10 as of the end of 2014. There's no telling what others will be created in the future, but as of the posting of this video, this is what they are. For this list, we'll be looking at terms of strength, displays of power, Digivolution lines, and lists of attacks to show just how strong these guys really are. I won't be playing favorites either. In fact, my favorite Digimon isn't even close to being on this list. For some reason, I've always liked Shadow Seraphimon the best. I don't know why, but I just find him to be really cool. And before we even get started, let me just say right now that Omnimon X and Imperial Dramon Paladin mode will not be appearing on this list. There are a lot of people that believe that one of these two are the strongest, but they just aren't. When Pyodramon first digivolved to Imperial Dramon, he may have claimed to be stronger than any other Digimon, but this was either a mistranslation or a boastful claim. He wasn't even a match for Malamayosmon or Black War Greymon without help. He's hardly the first Digimon to claim to be the strongest of all, and has since faced other opponents such as Daemon who have proven to be mountains above him in terms of strength. And there are plenty of Digimon a lot stronger than Daemon. Granted, we haven't seen him fight in his Paladin mode aside from the 10 seconds he fought against Armageddon, but even with Omnimon's strength added on to his own, there is no way his power rose to be that much greater than his fighter mode. You're telling me this guy can defeat the Digimon Sovereigns? I don't think so. He may have been able to defeat Armageddon with a single attack, but the effects of the sword causing an opponent's data to reset. That's not to say that he's not incredibly powerful, probably in the top 20, but he's hardly the strongest of all, and we're only focusing on the top 10. As for Omnimon X, most people believe him to be the strongest because of his all-delete attack. Many say that this is the strongest attack there is, but this is not only inaccurate, it is never stated anywhere in any verse or translation. The only official thing we know of the attack is that it unlocks the Grey Sword's true potential. True, he may have used this attack to reset Yggdrasil, which in turn reset the digital world, but I'm pretty sure that simply stomping down on it would have been just as effective. After all, Yggdrasil was cracked simply from Alphamon's blade accidentally hitting it. Omnimon X couldn't even defeat Dex Doro Goramon, which is already proof that he's not the strongest, but even if his orderly attack actually was the most powerful move, it doesn't mean that Omnimon X himself is the strongest. That would be like saying a level 1 Goldeen is the most powerful Pokemon because it used the one hit knockout move Horn Drill to defeat a level 100 Arceus, or that Krillin is the strongest because his Destructo Disc is an instant kill. Just look at Apoclemon. His total annihilation attack is a self destruct technique that can wipe out an entire dimension. And Seraphimon can use his Rising Halo attack to create a big bang like the one that created our universe, but you won't be finding either of them on this list either. Although a Pokemon did come close. So now that I've disproved these rumors, let's get started, shall we? Kicking off this list is this guy, Omega Armamon Burst Mode. But to truly get an idea of how strong he is, we have to look at his Digivolution line and a few other powerful Digimon. At this point, I'm sure that everyone has heard of the Seven Great Demon Lords. This is a group of some of the most evil and most powerful Digimon of all. Only a few surpass them in terms of strength and evilness, such as Grand Drachmon. The most cunning and manipulative of them is Barbermon, who is the one we'll be looking at. This is a very powerful Digimon. He's so strong, he's capable of easily controlling the mega-level Goldmon Black, who is a god of destruction. In fact, his secondary attack, Pandemonium Lost, which unleashes energy in the high temperature explosion, is so powerful that Malamayotismon's primary attack, Screaming Darkness, which was powerful enough to overwhelm Imperial Ultramon Fighter Mode and a bunch of other Digimon, only releases a fraction of this energy. With that comparison in mind, you can get the idea of how strong Barbarmon is. He even manages to take over one of Victor's host computers in Digimon Next, which is supposedly as strong as 9,000 Digimon. His real goal, however, is revealed in Super Cross World, where he seeks to revive a powerful legendary weapon Digimon known as Armamon. He manages to accomplish this, but when he does, Armamon is revealed to be too powerful to control. How very cliche. He actually grabs Barbarmon and converts his data into a sword, effectively using this powerful Demon Lord as a weapon. This alone shows you just how powerful Armamon is. Later, Barbarmon's consciousness awakens inside the sword, and the two digivolve together to become Omega Armamon Burst Mode. Now if Barbarmon is incredibly powerful, and Armamon is a great deal more powerful, just imagine how strong Omega Armamon must be. He possesses swords of darkness, light, fire, ice, and thunder. And his attacks include Hell and Thunder, Heaven and Break, Ice and Fire, Rage Demon Breath, and Sword of Meteor. If all that wasn't intimidating enough, his appearance alone is enough to send a chill up your spine. 
This is not someone you want to mess with. Everyone knows the basic levels that Digimon Digivolve through. After hatching from their egg, they go through the stages Baby, In Training, Rookie, Champion, Ultimate, and finally, Mega. Though there have been several cases where a Mega level Digimon has Digivolved again, they are still classified as a Mega. However, there are some extremely rare cases where when a Mega Digimon has Digivolved again, that the level they reach is so high that they get their own classification. This level is referred to as the Super Ultimate level. Chronomon is one of the few Digimon that has managed to reach this level. But let's put that on hold for now so we look at how Chronomon came to be. I'm sure you all know of the 10 legendary warriors from Season 4. Among them, Agunimon is usually considered to be the leader of the group, so we'll be focusing on him. His human form is generally considered to be a champion level, while his beast form is considered to be an ultimate, and his hybrid form is Omega. The strongest form we can reach on his own is Ancient Greymon. But if he's given the power of four of the other legendary warriors, human and beast spirits, he becomes the even more powerful Emperor Greymon. Similar to him is Lobomon, who also goes through the same stages, with Magna Garurumon being his version of Emperor Greymon. And if you combine these two together, you get Susanoomon, the master of all ten elements. Although most consider him to be a mega, there are sources that say he's a super ultimate. Whatever level he is, he is still incredibly powerful even more so than the Super Demon Lord Lusamon Shadow Lord mode. With his Celestial Blade attack, he can slice and stab everything in the digital world, or literally cut the entire planet in half if he wanted to. He is the strongest destructive god, and it is said that when the network system descends into chaos, he will erase the existing system and create a new one. Then we have ho o -Mon, sometimes known as phoenix -Mon, depending on the translation, a very powerful mega who is the head of all bird Digimon, and is said to be the one who presides over Holy Species Digimon with unfathomable power. He can Digivolve further to Varodurumon, who is the Guardian of the Sky, and has been around since the creation of the digital world. If you take Varodurumon and combine him with Susanoomon, you'll get this guy, Chronomon Destroy Mode. At a super ultimate level, this guy is a super powerful god of destruction, just as his name indicates, and he becomes intent on destroying the world. However, once he's purified, he'll Digivolve to his much more powerful Holy Mode, and the ninth spot on our list. His attacks are Holy Flare, Final Heal, God Cross, Chronos Crop, and Starlight Explosion. Good thing he's a good guy. Coming in at number 8 is Ultimate Chaos Mod, and yes, that is Chaos spelled with a K for some reason. Not only is this guy very intimidating, he's even stronger than he looks. Like Omega Armor Mod and Chrono Mod, he is also born from Digimon Digivolving together, however, it takes more than two. The most powerful of the required Digimon is Kentarasmon, one of the Royal Knights. If you don't know who the Royal Knights are, they're a group of super powerful Digimon that was founded by Imperial Ultramon Paladin Mode to protect the peace of the digital world and to serve Yggdrasil, the god of the digital world. Another Digimon needed is Darktramon, whose primary attack uses Dark Matter, which no one is capable of surviving, and has strength to rival the Royal Knight Gallantmon. The third is Banjoleomon, possesses a defensive ability that can negate 89.9% .9 of an opponent's physical attack. If you take these three and combine them with a the Varuduromon, you'll get Ultimate Chaos Mon. Due to the strain from fusing four mighty powers all at once, most of his strength retains a balance of power collected in his arms, which take on a gigantic size as a result. Also, he is unable to store his digicores within his body, so the two of them manifest bare on his shoulders. It's hard to tell just what exactly he's supposed to be. Even his species is called unique. Oh, really, he's a unique type Digimon. His power is so great that he can't even suppress it, and it flows from his body as if it was leaking out. Rookie Digimon and below are unable to even approach him due to that power, so imagine how strong he must be if he actually unleashes his true potential. His attacks are Broken Destroy and Ultima Burst, and his primary attack can easily defeat an even larger Digimon. At this point, even though it takes one of the Royal Knights to create him, it's hard to say whether he's still a good guy or not. There are a lot of bad Digimon, but out of all of them, this one is the most evil. I'm not kidding. He is a super demon lord that's literally the physical manifestation of all the sins in the digital world, who also has the ability to atone for them. Resembling the first beast of Revelation, he has seven legs, each one with a sword protruding from it, and each sword bears one of the crowns of the seven deadly sins. As a creature that's literally sin incarnate, it's pretty much impossible to beat him since his atonement power allows him to counterbalance any attack used against him that contains even a hint of malice. Good luck finding a way around that puzzle. Theoretically though, there must be some kind of loophole since he has been defeated before, 
but even without this ability, his power is nothing to overlook. His attacks include grandiloquent speech, cathedral, and step. Ogudamon is actually born by combining any two of the seven demon lords, meaning there are 21 different Digimon combinations that can be made. However, since DNA Digivolving works by taking the most powerful parts from both Digimon and bringing them together, and the demon lords are different in levels of evilness and strength, Ogudamon's power will be greater depending on which two demon lords are used. To truly have Ogudamon at the pinnacle of strength, the best combination will be with Lusamon and Daemon, but not simply as you see them here. I'll explain this so you can get a true understanding of Ogudamon's strength when it comes from them. Lusamon Chaos Mode is both the leader, founder, and strongest member of the demon lords. Formerly an angel Digimon that once ruled the entire digital world after stopping the great war between the humanoid and beast type Digimon, he eventually went mad with power, but even before he became a demon lord, he had an abundance of power. Even at the rookie level, he possessed power and intelligence that surpassed even that of an ultimate. He was defeated by the mega levels of the ten legendary warriors until he was released from his prison by the two traitorous royal knights, Crusadermon and Dynasmon. Upon destroying them and absorbing their data, he mode changed to his chaos mode. Lacking a champion level, his mode change takes him right into the ultimate level. In this form, he possesses power over both light and darkness and it's even said that his strength rivals that of the Yggdrasil. His strongest attack has a 50-50 chance of either completely annihilating a foe or inflicting massive damage upon them. Upon having the remaining pure data left in his body removed, he mo changes once again to his Shadow Lord mode, and is now at the mech level. As the only other super demon lord besides Ogudomon, in this form, also known as his Satan mode, he resembles the Dragon of Revelation and also possesses the crowns of the Seven Deadly Sins. His mind and his body are actually separate from one another, and his consciousness takes the form of a larva that is located in Gena, the orb of darkness that he holds, which is capable of absorbing and neutralizing all attacks. This larva controls the entire dragon body and is capable of acting as a separate individual entity with the strength of a mecha and its own set of attacks, but without it to control the dragon, it will spiral out of control and destroy everything in its path. Now if you'll recall earlier in the video, I mentioned Daemon. He was formerly a Seraphimon before falling into the Dark Ocean the source of all evil in the digital world, the same way Laylamon used to be a Nofanimon before falling in. As Daemon, he becomes the source behind all the chaos within the digital world. He first appears in Season 2 and shows just how powerful he is by easily picking apart the Digidestin's partner Digimon. Not even Imperial Digimon was able to scratch him as Daemon simply played with him the entire time. In fact, the only reason the Digidestin were able to defeat him was because they opened up a portal to the Dark Ocean and trapped him there. Even so, it took the power of Imperial Ultramon, Sophiemon, and Shakuomon just to push him through the portal, and that's only because Daemon did nothing to stop them because he was impressed by their power and resources, so he decided to give them the win. Sufficient to say, if he really hadn't wanted to lose that fight, he wouldn't have. He even laughed at them as the portal closed around him, telling them that he would one day return, and if Daemon wasn't terrifying enough, he can change into his even more powerful Beast Mode, but he's later defeated by the Royal Knight, All Force, Vigermon, Future Mode. Now putting Daemon on hold for now, I'd like to take a look at this guy, Arukatemon. Arukatemon is a very unique Digimon that was created by Daemon to help him take over the digital world. One of the most interesting things about him is that unlike with most Digimon, no matter what level he's at, whether it be Rookie, Champion, Ultimate, whatever, the name stays the same. This could be because Arukatemon has no sense of self. He's a cursed bewitching beast Digimon that was artificially created based on the data of various Digimon. He is so incredibly powerful that even in his baby form, he's powerful enough to vaporize Megas. He even defeated the leader of the Dark Masters, Piedmon, while in his baby form. His nature is to digivolve by absorbing the data of other Digimon. He digivolves from his baby form straight to his rookie form after absorbing Piedmon's data, then after somehow escaping from Magna Angemon's Gate of Destiny, he absorbs the data of Iceleomon to digivolve Champion, then Seraphimon to reach Ultimate. It is believed that the existence of Arukatamon at the mega level is the greatest threat to the digital world and so he must never be. Now getting back to Daemon, after he was destroyed, Arukatamon absorbs his data and digivolves to the mega level. At this level, he is able to hold his own against Animon, Rosemon, Regulumon, and Dominimon, all at the same time. Even so, he then digivolves further to the super ultimate level after digivolving with the Digimental. He was a massive threat to the digital world before, but now he's got some serious firepower on his hands. In this form, he is the ultimate destruction monster that brings disaster. He is able to destroy large areas of land and kill entire armies with a single attack. His primary attack shoots an invisible beam from his eyes that reduces everything hit by his attack to nothing but zeros and ones of primitive data while restoring himself upon causing damage to others. It turns out, however, that Daemon had planned on getting absorbed all along. Since Arukatemon has no sense of self-awareness, Daemon's personality is able to return, allowing him to take over Arukatemon from the inside. 
He then destroys Arukadamon and absorbs his data, allowing him to digivolve to the Super Ultimate level. Like Arukadamon, his name stays the same in this form, possibly since he achieved this by absorbing Arukadamon's data. In this form, he's able to freely control and use the Dark Virus to damage his opponents. It's quite possible that at this point, he may have even surpassed Lucimon's Shadow Lord mode in terms of power. Now getting back to Ogudamon, if he were ever to be born from these two Demon Lords at their highest peak of power, he would truly be a force to be reckoned with. In fact, since combining these two at this level of strength has never actually taken place, the Ogudamon that they would become may even be at the Super Ultimate level himself, or perhaps even a whole new Digimon entirely. Either way, I wouldn't want to run into this guy, even if he was born from the two least strongest members of the Demon Lords. Remember when I said that there were some Digimon that were even more evil and more powerful than the Demon Lords? Well, this is one of them. And I'm not even talking about our sixth spot yet. I'm referring simply to Bagramon. Formerly a high-ranking angel Digimon that served the Digimon God and ruled over death, he became dissatisfied with the way Yggdrasil did things. Deciding that he could do a better job, he betrayed Yggdrasil and is punished for it. He received the Scourge of the Digimon God and permanently loses half of his body and one of his eyes then replaces the missing half of his body with an artificial one cut from the server tree, which is the digital world's version of the mythical world tree that Yggdrasil is named after. His artificial arm allows him to catch hold of the ghostly forms of others. He can literally rip out a Digimon's soul from its body and send it to heaven or hell as he pleases, or even place it within another Digimon's body. He can also generate a dimensional storm anywhere within the digital world, through which he stretches his artificial arm to attack an opponent. We see this in Season 6, and we also witness as he reaches into the human world and covers everything and everyone in the city with rust. He also gains a large ruby to replace his missing eye that allows him to observe anywhere in the digital world and instantaneously obtain any information he wants to know. Even though it is said that he would be forgiven if he repented before Yggdrasil, he refuses to do so. Seeking to destroy and rebuild the digital world in his image, and to give a merciful death to the humans, Bagumon raises an army and an entire empire that even the demon lord Leilamon joins, and he soon becomes known as the Sage of Death. Among Bagramon's army is this guy, Axe Nightmon. He is the DNA digivolution of the Mega Digimon, Skull Nightmon, and Axemon. You don't want to turn this guy into your enemy. It's said that there are a few that can fairly fight Axe Nightmon face to face and defeat him. He plans to secretly betray and overthrow Bagramon, and almost does so when he absorbs his data, digivolving to Mega Axe Nightmon. But instead, as Daemon did with Arukadamon, Bagramon does not die when his data is absorbed, and instead absorbs Mega Axe Nightmon from inside his own body. This allows Bagramon to digivolve up to Darkness Bagramon, the greatest emperor of evil. That strength is symbolized by the evil power spilling out of his body, and if a weak evil is bathed in it, then it immediately becomes a groveling subordinate. The darkness held within the hearts of humans and Digimon is intensified and fused with Darkness Bagramon's own fathomless power. This plan is to destroy all good and fill the world with evil to obtain a world that he can manipulate at will. Anyone that he considers worthless, he destroys by simply flapping his wings or by unleashing his fathomless power from the red eyes on his chest, transforming all of his surroundings into nothingness. Later, Darkness Bagramon shatters the landscape around him and absorbs its data, allowing him to dig out further to Mega Darkness Bagramon, a giant super-powered version of Darkness Bagramon, and the sixth spot on our list. His attacks include Mega Darkness Snatcher, Evil Charm, and Mega God of Death Snatcher. You definitely don't want to run into this guy in the dark alley, considering you can even find one for him to fit in. Similar to how Pokemon was born from the data of Digimon that were lost through evolution, Quartzmon was born from the remnants of Mega Darkness Bakramon's data combined with the digital network of the human world. This guy is seriously bad news. The old clock shop man even states that he's the worst Digimon to ever exist in history, and he brings together the Digidestined from previous seasons across space and time to help stop him. Quartzmon is known for having a greed for the data of the entire world, and he completely swallows and absorbs Digimon. The large wicked ball that corresponds to the majority of his body is a fusion reactor that generates his power source from the data he absorbs. He generates computer particles, and if anyone touches them even slightly, their body will be wiped out without leaving any spread of data. Or he will use his tentacles to seize an opponent and pour these particles into their body to cause an internal explosion. He seems to have the power of creation. Over the course of two years, which is actually about 2,880 years in the digital world, since a single minute in the human world is equal to a full day in the digital world, Quartzmon creates an entire dimension called the DigiQuartz, which exists between the human world and the digital world, acting as a mirror to the human world. Several Digimon and even humans end up finding their way into the DigiQuartz and getting lost. This was actually Quartzmon's intention, as he uses the DigiQuartz to lure in Digimon and feed off their data. He's also capable of creating clones of those he absorbs, 
which include Sumamon, Karamon, Chrysalamon, Inframon, Myotismon, Venomyotismon, Malamyotismon, and a giant Diaboramon, is able to digivolve or de-digivolve these copies at will. Also, similar to the D-Reaper, he's capable of creating agents to do his bidding and absorb the data of other Digimon. His agents emerge from the center of the digiports and resemble rock formations with faces and are pretty powerful, even though they're humorously referred to as giant cucumbers. Another display of Corsmon's power is his ability to remove his terminal body from his main body and take on the form of other Digimon to lower them into digiquartz, or to simply absorb them and return to his main body. Corsmon's true goal is eventually revealed to absorbing and combining with the human world. Though the digiquartz is quite fragile and the matter within can disintegrate into data from a single touch, it is also Corsmon's key to achieving this goal. He intends to convert the entire world into the digiquartz and starts combining it with the human world, Eventually, Tokyo and several other areas around the globe are fused with the Digicorts, and the process rapidly spreads across the planet. He converts everyone into data and pulls it onto his body in order to become a single, all-powerful entity. Fortunately, the only remaining human and his partner Digimon, crossed up by Rester German's superior mode, uses the Brave Snatcher, a weapon created from Mega Darkest Bagramon's arm, to enter the field of data Quartzmon is fusing with and find his Digicore. Aided by the individual data of everyone else, they're able to strike the bit of data that is Quartzmon and destroy him, thereby returning everything to normal. He then reverts to a digi egg, which is taken to the digital world for safekeeping, presumably to make sure Quartzmon stays in an egg form. Though we never really see Quartzmon himself actually fight, his attacks include Yuputa Particle Cannon, Ruin Blast, and Copy, the latter allowing him to use the attacks of the Digimon he absorbed. Digimon. Based on the mythological yellow dragon of the center, Banglongmon is said to be the closest to the Digimon god, along with Erdramon for some reason. He's sometimes even called the god of the digital world himself, although that title rightfully belongs to Yggdrasil. He serves as an emperor Digimon who rules the world. Although he is good, he is also evil, and is called the Taiji of Light and Darkness. We all know the four Digimon sovereigns, each one overseeing a different section of the digital world, but this guy watches over the entire world. If the sovereigns are like the Kais from Dragon Ball Z, the Fangnamon would be the Grand Kai, and not only is he unbelievably powerful, he's also enormous. Just look how big he is compared to Azulamon, and Azulamon is freaking huge! Some of you are probably wondering how he could possibly be the fourth member on this list after his appearance in Season 6. Not only was he nowhere near as large as this video reveals him to be, but his power is so minor that he's used as a horse by Dorbikmon. The fact of the matter is that Season 6 is completely different from any other incarnation or franchise of Digimon whether that be video games, manga, movies, or past seasons. It can pretty much even be considered as non-canon in comparison. The universe of Season 6 works completely different from every other universe of Digimon. Digi-Destin even began capturing Digimon as if they were Pokemon. Not only do Digimon not digivolve, aside from the single stage increase through the process of what's called Super Evolution, but there aren't even any levels. No rookies, champions, ultimates, megas, nothing. Digimon that have appeared in the season that aren't actually that strong at all have shown to have a great deal of strength, and others that are incredibly powerful have been made out to be not that strong at all. This was the case with Fanglongmon. The way he is portrayed in this season is actually quite insulting compared to how strong he really is. In reality, Fanglongmon is very powerful and worthy of the fourth spot on this list. It actually takes all four Digimon Sovereigns DNA digivolving together in order to create Fanglongmon. That alone should clue you in up to how strong he really is. And just take a look at his attacks. They consist of Taikyoku, Yellow Rotation, Fang of the Emperor, and Dragon Smash. His primary attack releases a large blast of energy using Tai Chi that continuously disassembles everything in the digital world throughout eternity into the two extremes of light and darkness, driving it into non-existence before long. And his secondary attack generates a gigantic typhoon of an earth flow on the scale of a natural disaster. And here's the real kicker. His secondary attack is actually meant to be used as a shield, but the side effects allow it to be used as an attack. Not that he even needs a shield to protect him since his entire body is made of Honglong Ore, a type of material that boasts of absolute hardness that only Fanglongmon and one other Digimon possess. Honglong Ore is an incredibly scarce virtual ore that can only be scratched by other Honglong Ore, so it cannot be compared with other minerals and metals, and its absolute hardness is impossible to measure. Although living things can unify with Honglong Ore, it takes even more years than those since the Age of Myth. Since Fanglongmon's entire body is covered in scales of this material, Inflicting even a single wound upon him is impossible. If Fanglongmon is considered the Grand Kai according to Dragon Ball Z ranking, Shakamon will be the Supreme Kai. Like Fanglongmon, she is also considered the closest to Yggdrasil and is also said to be the god of the digital world. 
Supposedly, she is so big that she can fit any Digimon in the palm of her hand, and therefore it can be assumed that she may live in her own realm. Shakamon is a Tathagata Digimon, which can be translated as one who has thus gone or one who has thus come, which is generally used by Buddha when referring to himself. Since ancient times, she has been the protector of the Eastern Digital World, which is a region where there are still many mysteries and is the location of the Golden Land, which is said to be protected by multiple sacred barriers that only chosen Digimon can get through by surmounting to the threefold trials, while those that can't endure them are dispatched to the Dark Area. Shakamon is being repentant with love, but she will occasionally impose an ordeal upon the digital world in order to have it leap forward even further. These ordeals are also Shakamon's love, and it is said that she is still waiting for the arrival of the Digimon that will overcome the ordeal. She understands the underlying principles of heaven and earth, and possesses golden spheres that read 1 through 16, which is a reference to the 16 Orhats. It's actually completely meaningless to attack Shakamon due to her incredible power. Interestingly enough, her attacks aren't meant to actually harm an opponent, but to pacify them. Her attacks include Pilgrimage of Enlightenment Palm, Light of the Spider Thread, and Mantra of Neglect. Her primary attack enlightens those who challenge her to battle that conflict is meaningless by having them endlessly fight against an illusion on top of her palm until their mind and body are exhausted and they can no longer fight. Her secondary attack purifies and remedies evil by illuminating the opponent with a halo that cannot be shut out even if they close their eyes. Her third attack crushes hostility with a thundering voice, knocking the opponent away beyond the horizon. With attacks this powerful, it makes you wonder how destructive they would be if they were actually meant to cause harm to an opponent. If Bagalomon and Shakamon are considered to be gods of the digital world, Zed Millenniumon would be their opposite. He's even classified as an evil god Digimon that flies freely between space and time. As such, he's a king of evil that's intent on destroying all eras and all worlds. He's so strong that he has bands of fractal code wrapped around his body to act like chains to suppress his abilities and keep his unstable powers at bay. If these bands are ever broken, Zed Millenniumon will reign unfathomable destruction upon the digital world. Even Homostasis, a fragment of Yggdrasil, predicted that he would appear one day to destroy the world. As soon as Zed Millenniumon is created, he begins absorbing all data around him and assimilating it with his own body. He also proves to be practically undefeatable from the outside since all attacks are ineffective. Like Quartzmon, he's also capable of creating copies of other Digimon, called a Virtual Reality Digimon, or VR Digimon for short. Digimon that he has created copies for have included Omnimon, Apocalymon, War Greymon, Imperial Dramon Paladin Mode, Venom Iotismon, Black War Greymon, Gallantmon Crimson Mode, Sakuyamon, and Mega Gargomon. He also creates dark clones of Tai, Davis, and Takado to control these Digimon copies. These Millenniumon's attacks include Time Destroyer and Chrono Paradox. Primary attack consigns opponents to oblivion across space and time that no one has ever returned from alive. A secondary attack fires two atomic rays from his mouth that destroys everything in their path. But not only is Zed Millenniumon immensely powerful, he also has a very interesting backstory too, which helps show how strong he is. We all know of the four Dark Masters created by Apocalymon that appeared in Season 1 and were responsible for sealing away the Digimon Sovereigns. Even though Paimon was the leader of the group, the most destructive and possibly most powerful of them was Machine Dramon. This was one nasty fellow with a whole lot of firepower. In fact, it's even implied that War Greymon was only able to defeat him because he's a Draymon destroyer, meaning he's built to take down almost any Dragon-type Digimon, basically anyone with the word Dra in their name. And even then, he almost loses his life in the process. Now, we all know that when a Digimon dies, that their data is reconfigured into a Digi-Egg. What that means is that all the data and power that they've accumulated during their lifespan is lost, and they basically need to start over from scratch. That's gotta be annoying. However, there are very rare occasions when they are instead reborn from within the corpse of their data. This is known as Death X Evolution. We saw this happen with Venom Myotismon. Although this didn't happen to Machine Dramon, his data does manage to survive, preventing him from having to start over as a Digi-Egg. But keep in mind what I just said about Death X Evolution, because that will come up later. Jump forward four years and we have Ken under the influence of the Dark Spores trying to rule the digital world as the Digimon Emperor. To pull this off, he gathers data of Greymon, Kabuterimon, Metal Greymon, Garuberimon, Angemon, Erdramon, Monochromon, Kuagamon, Skull Greymon, and the giant Devimon infused with the Black Gears. Taking all their data, he uses this to create a Frankenstein Digimon called Chimeramon, an incredibly powerful and dangerously destructive Digimon. He was destroyed in the battle with Magamon, but like with Machine Dramon, his data also survives, and is able to pull himself back together. Not only that, he combines with Machine Dramon's data, enabling them to digivolve together to become Millenniumon. How is this possible, you may ask? Was Machine Dramon just floating around for four years as particles of data? 
No, actually we get a bit of time travel here. As explained by Jedi, Apocalymon's existence generates chaos in the digital world and in space-time itself. His presence even somehow synced the time difference between the human world and the digital world. Though this is never confirmed, he also apparently ends up creating a hole in space and time that reformed but gravely injured Chimeramon fell through. This is when he manages to absorb Ashindramon's data and thus Millennium Mon was born. Now, Millennium is one bad dude with great power. Not only does he free Piedmon from back at Angemon's Gate of Destiny, he also revives the other Dark Masters along with Devimon, Edamon, and Myotismon. He possesses the power to create pocket dimensions to trap an opponent for all eternity, or to simply destroy the dimension after sealing an opponent in it. He even has the ability to turn others to stone, and can also regenerate himself. He's so abnormally strong that he's capable of defeating all four Digimon Sovereigns, and his power even causes the digital world itself to become warped and twisted. Being made up of so many Digimon, his mind is considered to be in utter chaos, and he therefore only knows how to destroy. With Millenniumon causing trouble, Taizagumon calls out to Ryo from the Tamers universe for help. Drawn into the digital world, he's partnered with Monodramon, and it's also around this time that the younger Ken first enters the digital world and is partnered with Wormmon. They somehow manage to defeat Millenniumon by using the Digi Egg of Desire to get to his heart. This causes Millenniumon's body to break down into dark spores, one of them infecting Ken, which turns him into the Digimon Emperor. This is actually a bit of a time paradox. The dark spore that made Ken become the Digimon Emperor came from Millenniumon, causing Ken to create Chimeramon four years later. But Millenniumon only came to be because Chimeramon came to the past to become Millenniumon. It's all very confusing, but that's a story for another time. Getting back to Millenniumon, it turns out that he did not die in the fight. Instead, he digivolves to Moon Millenniumon. This digivolution happens when Millenniumon absorbs the data of Devi Tamamon and the mortal Digimon version of the Devil, Grand Drachmon. In this form, he's capable of using incorporeal attacks to chop up another Digimon spirit, blind them, or destroy their heart. Yet he later goes through the Death X evolution I mentioned earlier and digivolves even further upon combining with Gigadramon to become Zed Millenniumon. Or he's capable of digivolving from Millenniumon straight to Zed Millenniumon by combining with the Demon Lord Laylamon, along with X Nightmon, Blastmon, Ultimate Chaosmon, Duskmon, Golfmon, Megidramon, and Argomon Mega Level. Only this time he will appear without the bands that subdue his power. When Ryo once again manages to defeat him, Zed Millenniumon reveals that there is a yin and yang connection between the two of them, in which he cannot be destroyed as long as Ryo lives. In order to truly defeat him, Monodramon combined with Zed Millenniumon's data by performing a forced DNA digivolution, digivolving the two of them together to Cyberdramon. Monodramon's goodness pacifies Zed Millenniumon's wicked nature, while Zed Millenniumon's evil is the cause for Cyberdramon's fierce temperament, making him thirst for battle and desire to destroy any virus-type Digimon that invades the network, and occasionally lose control and violently lash out. Ryo therefore takes Cyberdramon to the digital world and the Tamers universe to learn how to control him, which is when he meets the other Tamers. Cyberdramon D digivolves back to Monodramon, his kind of personality is dominant, and Zed Millenniumon's influence is greatly lessened. But it's not until Ryo and Cyberdramon bio merge to Justimon that the evil of Zed Millenniumon is truly neutralized within Cyberdramon once and for all. Good thing too, because that Zed Millenniumon was downright terrifying. Taking the number one spot on our list is the Digimon King himself. Though Shoutmon is capable of digivolving to Omni Shoutmon, or Super Evolving as Season 6 chooses to call it for some reason, Shoutmon's true power comes from fusing with other Digimon. Now, for those of you that don't know, Fusion is different from DNA digivolving or bar merging together. Instead, Fusion works more like armor digivolution. One or more Digimon will become part of another, either as a weapon, body armor, accessories, or additional limbs and other body parts. Shotmon Time 7 Superior Mode is a fusion of Shotmon and almost every other Digimon in the digital world. Now there are those that say it was a fusion of everyone, but this is not only unlikely, but flat out impossible. First of all, there were a lot of evil Digimon that hadn't or wouldn't side with Shotmon. Don't forget that Bagamon had recruited hundreds of thousands of Digimon for his army, and then there were hundreds of thousands more that were digi -eggs at the time. He did fuse with most of whatever was left of the Digimon race, or at the very least with the entire Cross Heart United Army and the Digimon of the Digicards. In fact, there were so many fusing with him that there wasn't any more room inside his actual body, and they instead began rotating around him like the planets orbit around the sun, but he could still control them as if they were still an actual part of his body. With all these Digimon fusing together, this not only made him incredibly large, but unbelievably powerful as well. With so much power backing him up from so many Digimon forming his body, it's no wonder he holds the number one spot on this list, as labeled as the Digimon King. In the manga, he's even destroyed Ultimate Chaos Mon with a single hit, and he does the same with Mega Dark and Spagramon in the anime. His syntax include Final Crossblade and Double Flare Buster. 
Even though he may be an incompetent king sometimes, I'm sure glad he's a good guy. You probably thought that this list was finished with the number one entry, but the fact of the matter is that there is another Digimon that's not only stronger than Shot One Times Seven Superior Mode, but whose power greatly surpasses his. The only reason he's not officially on the top ten list is because he is a Digimon who, as of yet, has not had his stage reached, and with good reason too. The Digimon I'm referring to is known as Gaiamon, and he's more of a theoretical Digimon since no one has become him yet. Basically. He's a Digimon that's merged with the entire planet, either Earth or the digital world, including all its inhabitants. So no matter how you look at it, Gaiman's power would surpass anyone, including everyone else on this list since they will actually be a part of him. Of course, since the birth of Gaiman would mean the destruction of whatever world he merges with and the extinction of everyone on it, no one has managed to reach this form yet. To this day, there have only been two Digimon that have attempted to pull this off, and no, Lucimon is not one of them. He may have obtained the fractal code that made up the digital world, but he didn't merge with the planet itself or anyone on it. Gaiamon is first mentioned in Digimon World 3 for PlayStation. About midway through the game, the protagonist will come across Venmon, a cannibalistic rookie level Digimon that eats others in order to become stronger. At the end of the game, four Venmon digivolve together to reach the champion level. This Digimon is known as Snatchmon, and he's one nasty fellow. Seemingly completely devoid of emotion, the first thing he does is consume his master. Even though he's only a champion, he claims that he's the strongest of all Digimon, but he's hardly the first one to say this. It is possible though, since we don't know how many Digimon the four Venmon that made him up eight to get as strong as he is, but it's still most likely just an arrogant claim. Unfortunately, we never get the chance to find out just how strong he really is before he tells us of his master plan to become Gaiamon by merging with the planet. But first he combines with the Gunslinger Spy Satellite, a powerfully destructive weapon, to Digivolve to his megaform Galacticmon. Not only is this guy enormous, but he's also very powerful. His strongest attack can do 9,998 damage, basically reducing any Digimon's HP to 1. And he also has a powerful counterattack against any special attack, not to mention the ability to copy another's attack. Fortunately, he is defeated before he is able to become Gaiamon. The second Digimon to attempt this is Quartzmon, and he actually comes the closest to achieving this goal. As I stated about him earlier, he manages to turn all of Earth and the people in it into data and absorb them. But he doesn't manage to assimilate all that data in order to digivolve to Gaiamon before his own portion of data is located in the mass gathering and he is defeated. Since Gaiamon has never actually appeared, we can't say just how powerful he really is, what he looks like, or what his attacks are, but even the thought of the amount of power he possesses is completely unfathomable. He's basically a Digimon that's a living planet, so we're probably talking about something on the Gurren Lagann scale. Actually, since we'll have probably ended up absorbing the Yggdrasil too, he would essentially be the new Digimon God. Well, there you have it, the top 10 strongest Digimon of all time and the unachieved theoretical Digimon that would surpass them all. Bear in mind that this list may change if the creators make any other anime, manga, or games with new, even more powerful Digimon. In fact, they're coming out with a 7th season sometime in 2015, but as of the end of 2014, these are the top of the line most powerful Digimon there are. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Feel free to comment and share this video with anyone who might like it.